YouTube, we are back on the C-Stacks channel. What's up? It's me. It's your boy, the Black Hurricane, the Blonde Haired Menace. And let's get into this, man. Let's get right into business. <laughs> All right. What's up, guys? It's C-Stacks. As you can tell, I'm joined here again by Bert, the Black Hurricane himself, former midwinter champion. Uh, and today we're going to take a look at his deck from this year's midwinter, his Red Skull deck. Uh, so, as I said, you were the former midwinter champion uh, last mm -hmm. year, I guess, what, tw the midwinter 2018. You took home first place with Black mm -hmm. Cat Handlock, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right. So, this year you wanted to take something equally spicy, something else nobody was expecting. So, you landed on Red Skull, of all things, and you're doing something a little different this time. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very good deck. Very sneaky deck. And we'll, when we talk about the cards... We'll talk about why I chose who I chose. And it was a good time, man. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. Now, so you didn't quite make top eight this year. You just missed out. You went 3-2, but there were several other 3-2s who had just slightly better tiebreakers than you. Is that right? Yeah, I got hit by tiebreakers. But, yeah, man, 3-2. It, it wasn't a bad day, and I was actually I was kind of disappointed and shocked that I didn't make it. But it is what it is, you know? All right, well, let's go ahead and run through the deck list real quick, and then we'll kind of break it down, and we'll talk about kind of what you're going for, why Red Skull, of all the main characters you could have picked, was, was the one we landed on for this particular strategy. So I'm just going to run down the deck list real quick, and then we'll talk about kind of the general strategy and then some of the, the choices. All right, so all right. it's Red Skull main character. That's Hydra Red Skull. For the characters, we have four Iceman, three Wasp, three Cosmo, four Kane, Three Fitzsimmons, three Jessica Jones, one Fanged Leviathan, that's the three drop Comet Fall one, four Prowler, two Quicksilver, two Hydra Magneto, the five drop Hydra one, four Maximus, two Dark Phoenix support character. And we got some equipment. We have all four Cosmic Cubes to go with your Red Skull and the one Nullifier. And then the plot twists are four, just four Shock to the System and four Fine Cover. And the locations are four Gehenna, which is the Hydra Wild location. Four Daily Bugle and four Yellows. So why don't you talk us through kind of just the general strategy of the deck? Because I see the four Prowler in here and there's four Maximus, so clearly we're going for some nonsense. So what's kind of just the idea behind it? So okay, and before before I let you know what the idea is or what the getaway is, I just want to say whoever's listening out there, anybody on YouTube that can hear this, go ahead and throw these 62 cards together and give it a try for yourself. I guarantee you're gonna like it, especially if you want if you want some kind of speed. I feel as though Red Skull is on the right track in terms of being able to keep up with these decks that can hit you hard in four or five turns. Um, so when I was, this is about two weeks ago, because Christmas time and holiday got it got real foggy for me, and I didn't know what I wanted to play for midwinter yet, but. I figured, hey, why don't I just why don't I just give the opponent a four four one health main character? Because Prowler can take Maximus's ability, you throw four yellows, and all of a sudden they've lost four, five, six life in a turn. Um, what made me want to pick Red Skull over, say, Kingpin or some of the other choices? I think one he, of the first drafts was uh, Professor X, right? That's right, Professor X. Um, for me personally, Red Skull, he didn't have to necessarily worry about. Uh, getting his locations on time. He had natural scrying ability with uh, Mental Calc. Mental Calc is, was such a good thing, especially on the play, because, like, every turn, every shock was worth four cards, two being really good cards and two being bad cards that you wouldn't have to play. And uh, the more the more I was playing it, the more I was like, wow, this is, this is where I want to be uh, for Milwaukee. So... I mean, the obvious, the obvious Prowler Maximus combo was with Kingpin or like a stall deck like Ripley or Ghost. But I wanted to keep it low to the ground. I wanted to have speed on my side, and Mental Calc proved exceptional for what I was trying to do. I remember at one point there was even the idea of just not even playing the cubes, just staying at level one and keeping that Mental Calc because it was I so kind crucial. Of, you know what? I kind of wish I didn't have to play the cubes. And the only reason they are even in there is because when you when you uh, you have to understand when you're playing this not this particular deck but Prowler Maximus in general it has a terrible matchup against Sinister Six. Um, when you give them Prowler, 
you're basically giving them a life because the Sinister Six keyword will still proc on their next turn. So they'll have two main characters out instead of one, and that's just bad business for you. So I figured, you know what? I probably just have to be a 10-10 and start ripping away their plot twists or their characters. And that ended up being it ended up being kind of decent for me. It's still 60-40 Sinister Six, but before that, it was abysmal. Like you, it was almost impossible to beat Sinister Six without the cubes. So, so going off that, because I noticed, so like obviously we're trying to win on like turn five or six at the very latest. Um, but there's a uh, Dark Phoenix supporting character in here, which is a nine drop. Was that a conscious effort to try to fix that almost unwinnable Sinister Six matchup? It's it. She's only in there for Sinister Six. You don't want the game to go long against Mystique or Thor or anything like that. You want the game down. You want the game under five. Um, you want to be giving them Prowler turn four, and you want to throw down like a Jessica or a Magneto to kill them. Um, Mystique or DP nine drop. She's like the because she comes down calls keywords, and you have a chance against the Sinister Six. Um, but the Sinister Six player is not going to let that happen because they have a whole bunch of stuff. Like just Craven alone, they can win the game off of Craven alone. So you kind of have to you have to just throw out the Maximus idea and just get two cubes in the first four turns, maybe sit there as a 10-10, make it hard for them to crack you, and then uh, you just stall out and get to nine. That's how, that's how, that's a reliable way to beat them. Um, I, I kind of wish I didn't have to play it, because in the early game, she's a, she's a blank texted card. She doesn't do anything for you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so I, I see a few other really cool cards in here I want to touch on. So we have uh, five drop Quicksilver, which mm-hmm. is a card that people were excited for when it was spoiled, and then it just kind of fell off the map completely. Why are we playing Quicksilver? You know, he, I mean, he's just a five five. He has stealth. Uh, he has two life, so you have two chances to to hit the Prowler because after you give them the four four one main health or main character, they're gonna hide him. They're gonna throw dragons and and Thanos is in front of them. So you just want to be able to just throws Quicksilver down and get the hit uh, and just shake their hand. But if that doesn't work, we have a couple other things we can do. Right. And then uh, I think the Fang Leviathan thing is hilarious. Yeah, uh, it's, Fang it, Leviathan is the one where it's got Comet Fall and then it says, if your opponent's main character doesn't have a wound on it, you put a wound on it. So if you've given them Prowler, who is a one wound character and it's their main character now, then you just throw mm-hmm. that down Yeah. and win the game. Huh. Um, that's like the most reliable way to kill them after you've given them Prowler because they're going to throw down like they're going to throw down nullifier nullifying flight or stealth they're going to play like all kinds of stuff just to keep the defense up and like if you've been mental calcing it happened on stream too I think I think I threw down the Fang Leviathan on stream but they just can't do anything about it and they have to shake your hand because the game is over you know what I mean so so with the scry 4 is that fairly consistent that you're able to get that instant win I was, I was, um, we must have played like I got there Wednesday night and we didn't stop playing until Sunday. So it was close, closer to like 60, 70 hours of verses crammed into that weekend. I want to say more than, more than 75% of the time, Prowler came down on four as their main and they died on five, especially with us on the, on the play. Mm -hmm. Um, it was really fast, really, really, really consistent. I love mental calc and like Red Skull, man, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, obviously, Cosmo's in there for, uh, I would assume, mainly Jessica Jones. Because if they mainly just Jessica stick Jones. a Jessica Jones out there and you don't have an out to it, you can't pull off your 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 win condition. Right. Now, the thing, of, the thing about moving forward, like if somebody was to try this deck, the thing about it is you don't know what Red Skull's doing, right? So, a lot of the time, they wouldn't even throw down the Jessica until it was too late mm-hmm. because they didn't know that I was... They didn't know that I wasn't a 4 out of 60 deck. You know what I mean? Oh, by the way, for those who don't know, when I say 4 out of 60, I mean you have 4 cards out of your 60 um, after uh, 4 cards out of your 60 card deck that basically win you the game. Uh, Karnak has the 4 Tim Bubaz. Ultron has his 4 supporting character copies. Red Skull has the 4 cubes. So, like, even, even Jan, like, round 2, he looked at my hand. He saw Prowler and Max. He didn't take either of them with the with the yellow cube. He's like, I don't know what you're doing, so I'm just gonna take this nullify. And I was like, Yes, that's oh, man. exactly he what I want to hear. He could have got you. He could have got you. He right could have got me, and he didn't. Um, moving forward with the deck, I honestly, 
I would probably take out the cubes. The cubes, the cubes were bad just because you would rather see that fourth yellow or that or that copy of Prowler or Maximus, which means the deck is probably bad because you're always a two five and you can always get smacked. Um, so you'd probably have to change mains at that point. But the way it is now, it it was really fun and it was really like in your face, like oh, either you got it or you don't, you know. Mm-hmm. We also have Hydra Magneto in here. Was he just as an out to uh, the nullifier? Yes, he w- he was literally in there just for the nullifier because I didn't want to lose. There are times where like a good nullifier comes down and it nullifies the throne, and like that's like turn four, turn five, and like if you don't answer it, you're just going to get more and more behind. They'll kill your Jessica, they'll strip your cube from you, and it just gets bad. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to play this Magneto, and that cleaned up a lot of those nullifier matches. All right. Well, it's a really cool deck, man. It's really exciting to see something like Red Skull. Uh, you know, rear its head in a world of Thors and Dark Phoenix and uh, Mystiques. Uh, speaking of which, real quick, how much did you test this against the Trinity, knowing that going into midwinter, which is maybe the only um, unlimited format we're going to see uh, anytime soon? About half of my about half of my testing was against Thor and DP, just because I didn't I didn't want to lose to the Trinity. You know what I mean? I still ended up taking a lose to Thor, but that was that was a play mistake on my part. Um, yeah, I just, I didn't want, I didn't want to get my day ruined by them. Um, and I, I I believe that midwinter should be seen as like a place where like interesting, cool decks that could make it, but maybe they just need a little more time. And I wanted my deck to be looked at as that, as, as a deck that could be in the multiverse meta quote unquote. So I, I took it very seriously. I was like, well, the only way, the only metric I have is, can it stand up against the Trinity? And it turns out it can, um. On the draw, Thor looks stupid. Um, on the draw or the play, if DP doesn't open with two ramps in the first three turns, she's going to lose. And the Mystique match, come on now. We have three Wasps and four Iceman, so she just sits there and then becomes Prowler. And it's a good time, man, overall. I had a good time testing and a good time playing it. Awesome, absolutely. So let's talk about your matchups a little bit. Kind of, What did you play against and how did the deck perform uh, in your five rounds of Swiss? Um, well... I love Grandpa versus, and that's another reason I love this deck. It's literally Grandpa versus. You're playing, you're playing a location and passing for like three, four turns, and then all of a sudden the game just turns upside down, and you're winning out of nowhere, and you're a 10-10, and you're punching them in the face. Um, and I got to do that all weekend. So round one, I played against Black Bolt. I didn't do anything. I didn't even, I didn't even play a guy until I played the Prowler, and all of a sudden he was a four-four one health, and I won the next turn. Um, with Quicksilver. Um, round two, I played against Jan. It was Madam Hydra against Red Skull. And I really didn't... I, I didn't judge the deck correctly. I knew he was going to pop off once he leveled up. But I guess I kept a bad hand because we both were moving, like, really slow. And I was moving just a half turn too slow. And it, w- it was good. Once he popped off and, like, I started to catch my feet, he played the DP. So, Jan, if you're listening, I want my damn rematch because that was crap. <laughs> um, <laughs> round three, I played against I played against Mr. Black. It was a uh, Peterson shout out to Team Attack, um, and we played we played that match uh, the nights prior. And I was just getting smacked because that deck is so aggro. Like if you don't have your stuff at the right time, you will lose as Red Skull. But things went my way. I was on the draw. I opened with two yellows, a Prowler and a Max, uh, Iceman, Iceman, Wasp, Prowler, and then uh, he couldn't. Couldn't really do anything because he can't play his uh, he couldn't play his active camos or combi sticks or anything, so I won that one. Round four was against Thor. Uh, it was it was pretty good. I had all the stuff, but we we got into time because he couldn't really get his attacks to get through. I couldn't really my yellows didn't line up or something, and then uh, I dropped DP. I didn't take a wound until turn six. I dropped DP and called plus and minus. And then he played Punisher and swung in with uh, Luke Cage, Punisher, Jessica Jones, and Stick. And I played the second one and called, I think I called Plot Twist instead of Keywords. Um, and then the game the game got taken from me from there because he played another Punisher and took out my DP. Um, and he had Scarlet Witch, so even if I put the cube down, I couldn't couldn't get to a Scarlet and be a 10-10. Um, very good player. Uh, he actually wasn't even going to play Thor. He was going to play something entirely different. But I'm glad he got to come out. 
he doesn't get to play the game much. So I, I appreciate him coming out, playing something he, he kind of knew, sort of. Um, he made it to top eight, too, which is cool. So, And then round five. Round five was on stream. It was against Juggernaut. I started with Iceman, opened with a yellow Prowler Maximus. I just did my grandpa versus thing. I didn't do anything. He didn't get to level. He didn't even really get to wound me until like after Prowler was Prowler was out. And uh, yeah, I got him. Finished three two. I think tenth overall. So about halfway halfway there. It's not bad. So overall, would you say the the deck performed as it was supposed to? I I feel like it did. I really do. Um, I knew I knew that there was a good chance that Sinister Six was gonna win midwinter, and that's like the absolute worst matchup for me. So moving forward, like if there's if there was another multiverse event, the first thing you have to do with Prowler Max is you probably have to slam DP in your deck, and you have to you have to switch mains. Because the Red Skull, the Red Skull version, it's not good against Sinister Six. You're gonna have a hard time, especially on the draw, because um, you just need a shock every turn, and you only have four. You know what I mean? Right. So, so there were some other Prowler Max decks at the event. Um, there were, uh, I think there was a Kingpin one, right? Maybe mm-hmm. a few others. Who do you think is was, the is the best vessel to to, to do the the Prowler Max uh, thing moving forward? It's it's really hard to say. Again, Prowler Max, it's a great deck. I really enjoyed it. It's it's a really nice combo deck. But when you get into bed with four Prowler, four Max, four Yellows, you, you're automatically bad against the six, right? So I think whoever has a better chance or whoever has a better stall package against the six is probably the best deck. I don't know that it was Kingpin because Kingpin obviously didn't win. You know what I'm saying? Um I think in term I I honestly think in terms of speed, like if you're trying to be as close to four turns, I think Red Skull might have done it the best. Although I was looking into some others, like maybe there's some application with Phil Colson or Sister Grimm or uh who's the other one? Professor X. But um it's hard to say right now. It it, it requires more research, I think. I, I will say though, I will say though that of all the Prowler Maximus I feel like Red Skull was like, he was like right there. Like, it was so cool. Espe- like, I'm telling you, especially on the play, like going first, you get the mental calc for no for no reason. And like your draws just get better and better and better from there. Um, that's three turns. Your opponent only has three turns with their main character. Um, and I really like that surprise. Like, oh my God, what? I just lost four life in one turn. You know, I think that made it really strong. Um, if only there was a better way to deal with uh, the Sinister Six, but it is what it is. All right. Well, thanks for sharing the deck, man. A uh, huge shout out to, to the Team Attack guys for putting uh, this shindig on. It sounds like it was a good time. Twenty players came out, had a good time. Every, I think there was like of twenty of us, there were like sixteen different decks, that's, sixteen that's, different yeah, main awesome. characters. The yeah, diversity in there was too real, man. There was a Thor, and then there was no other Trinity to be found. Everything else was something interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good time, man. All right. Well, well, thanks for joining us, Bert. Uh, I, this is a really cool deck, I think. Uh, I like the creativity. Yeah, I like how Midwinter is kind of the melting pot of creative decks, and we always see something cool, especially from you with yeah, the, the, uh, the hand lock and then now Red Skull. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate that, Stacks. Hey, give it a try. Just try it out. It's it was it's it's been it's been the pride of verses for me for the past three or four weeks now. So definitely give it a try. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share. You know the deal. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.